Right. You know, that's, and it, to me, uh, whoever planned it, it was really a planning. I mean, and I think it was, Doolittle had a lot to do with it. Sure. Because he did work, he did flying out of China, I think, and everything years before that. Mm -hmm. So he knew the area. No, it's, it was interesting. I mean, I I was below decks on the phone listening to everything. I, I always had somebody on the flight deck. The electrician was always up there on the phones. So we had to do a play-by-play, -play, <laughs> which was, you know. Yeah, so you were kept in the loop. I, I, I kept it in the know, you yeah. know. So and when so when they actually launched the mission, when they when they were spotted by that Japanese fishing boat, and they decided they had to go, they were going two hundred miles further. To yeah, than they expected to go. We were supposed to be within four hundred, and I think it was six hundred when they took off. Right, right. And that's that's why a lot of them had to land in the water. Sure. So there must have been a pretty tense time on board when everybody realized that they'd been been, been yeah. spotted. Well, they didn't realize that it, they, they didn't get off any message. They were spotted, but they didn't get off the message. Right. But they couldn't take the risk. They had no, to go. No, they couldn't take the risk. That's right. why they took off right away. You sure. Know? And they made that decision. So when they took off, you were below decks doing uh, your job? I was, uh, I was always below decks on the generators. Sure. I was one of the key men on generators. That, that was my specialty. Right. And I mean... I, I, I I think back now and how lucky I was to escape being below deck so many times. And I didn't see the Hornet get hit until my daughter showed me the video. Mm. And if I saw that, I think I'd have been scared. <laughs> mm. So after the, uh, after the Tokyo raid, you served on the Hornet until when? Well, we, we left uh, and went back to Pearl Harbor, and then from Pearl Harbor we went down to Guadalcanal. We, we were air cover for Guadalcanal okay. when the Marines took over. Sure. We covered Guadalcanal, and that, that was, and then we had, after Guadalcanal we came back to Midway for the June 4th Battle of Midway. Which was one of the naval the turning points in the war. Turning point in the war right. was one of the naval victories, and that's when we lost all but one of our torpedo bombers. Sure, Ensign Gay was the only one that survived. The only one, right? And uh, then after that, we went back down to Guadalcanal again in Tarawa and Gilbert Islands, uh, covering in landings, mm -hmm. and that's when we headed up the. Santa Cruz for the Battle of Santa Cruz with the Enterprise. And uh, a lot of people don't know that the Enterprise car rental was a ace pilot on the Enterprise when we were out in the Pacific. So, uh, so a, a naval aviator from the Enterprise yeah. survived the war uh, and he started the started Enterprise, the Enterprise car, car rental. And I didn't know that till last October when I went aboard the Lexington to visit the museum in Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. a guy beside me was off of the Enterprise, told me the story, how he was the ace pilot on the Enterprise, mm. and he started the Enterprise car rental. Wow. Were there any aces that served aboard the Hornet? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You had a lot of aces yeah. on board. Well, I mean, they're aces in all the carriers, you know. Sure. Because if they shoot down five planes, I think they're considered an ace. Right, exactly. Uh, and uh, So you said the Hornet was hit? The Hornet was hit in Santa Cruz, the Battle of Santa Cruz. We were the only ship that day hit. And how was she, how was she damaged? Well, the first attack was about early morning, and he shot down well, most of the planes in the attack. But they did get, we did get hit with torpedoes launched by the planes. And then the second attack, we got hit with bombs by the dive bombers. Mm -hmm. And that was what put us out. Right. The second attack. And we were the only ship hit. The Enterprise was with us, but she managed to, to miss getting hit. Sure. 
And uh, so when the ship was damaged, everybody scrambles to try and keep her afloat and put out fires. Yeah, and yeah, we put out fires. Uh, I was below decks with, uh, and about thirty of us escaped from below deck up through the tube, up to the bridge. It's the only way out because uh, our other exit was uh, blocked right. by damage. But we were able to crawl up through the tube and out on the deck on the bridge. And we went, put out fires, and we did anything we could on deck. To help out. To help out. Right. It and, was a wooden deck, right? Yeah, and when we got up there, we had no life jackets. We had to find life jackets. Sure. Because going up through the tube, we couldn't take our Cape Park jackets up. Mm. And when we got up there, we had to find a life jacket, to, you know, to make sure we... When we abandoned so you didn't go, ship, you're right. Yeah, we had to have it on. Sure. And so how many? So when you traveled up the tube from from where you were stationed below decks to the bridge, how many decks? Or how how far was the distance that you had to go up that tube? Well, that's uh, we were maybe five decks below, and then you got all the way to hangar deck, and all the way up to the bridge. So how long did that trip take? Well, I I couldn't say how long it took, but I, all I know. Uh, you couldn't take your life jacket up. You had to go up just with whatever you had on. So it was on. an narrow space. And the officer in charge let everybody go up according to rank. And he was the last one to go up and out on the deck. Mm. And when we got up on deck, we didn't know what was going on. Sure. And we had to end up, we put out fires, we worked on that. We took an inch and a half line and we were in tow, it was the inch and a half line to uh, Northampton, but that inch and a half line broke, so we found a two inch line, and they had the two inch line hooked to the Northampton, and we were going at about seven knots when we got attacked again, and Northampton had to cut the tow line, and that was the end of our chance to, to escape to escape so you were left on your so own so we were left on our own and we uh, fought fires and put out the fires and about three o'clock that afternoon well it was, they call it 1500 in the navy mm -hmm. but i mean it's actually was three o'clock we got hit with two more torpedoes by two planes dropped their torpedoes and that damaged our engines uh, what we had left sure so the were, ship, you on, were you on board deck when that happened I, I was on deck. I saw the planes. So you drop saw the planes come in, and they dropped on the starboard side, and we were over on the port side. Mm -hmm. And when they hit, you had to brace yourself, because when they hit like that below deck, you could break your ankles or legs. The whole ship just you know what I mean raised up. Yeah, so they tell you to brace. You know what I mean? Just uh, relax. Yeah. And we could see the the torpedoes coming, and nothing we could do, but wait till it hit and that was what finished us mm. and then about 1700 which is five o'clock right we got the word to abandon ship and that's when we went down the lifeline aft on the port side there's a rope ladder and we had to jump in that oily and greasy water and swim away hoping to be picked up which we were sure. by destroyer motor whale boats and I was picked up with the motor whaleboat that picked up the captain. They picked up Captain uh, Mason and on the ship. He was the last one to leave. Mm -hmm. And then when he was out in uh, where we were, he helped me aboard the Mustin motor whaleboat. And he was on the Mustin that night when he had to give the order to fire their torpedoes and guns to sink the Hornet. Right. And I mean that was a, an awful decision. Must he have had been heartbreaking, make. yeah. It was heartbreaking, you know, to do that. But sure. they didn't want to leave the ship. It could be captured by Japanese sure. and all the information that was on it. So how many torpedoes did it take to, to, to finally sink her? Well, the destroyers, two destroyers fired all their torpedoes. I don't know how many they had. Right. And they fired their five inch guns. But it wasn't sunk till the next day. It took that long. Well, one of our, our planes out of the base there, somewhere in the base, had to sink it, you know. 
No, but it was damaged. There was nothing they could do. They couldn't save it regardless. 